Welcome to Advanced Construction Videos, where we show you how to tackle rocketry building techniques and more. On our website, we sell kits, motors, building supplies, and electronics. So come and learn, shop, build, and fly when you visit us at ApogeeRockets.com. The first step in building the X-15 is to assemble the wings. You can see these are huge wings, and they're much bigger than four inches. So what I had to do as I was designing this kit was to split them up into panels and we're going to glue them together. So first from the balsa sheet uh, we want to separate out the uh, fins and you'll notice there's little tick marks and you'll just cut through them with a hobby knife and they cut pretty easy. Just go around and do all that and then we'll uh, pop the fins out of the sheet. Now be careful here at this little arrow mark. Don't sand those because that actually, here on the front of the wing, this fairing curves inward and that piece right there is the part that curves inward so we don't want to sand that off. So I want to let you know that up, up ahead of time. And you'll also want to do the tail fins as well. Uh, but first I want to start gluing up the wing panels. And you'll notice that they only go together one way. Um, I got a piece of plastic here to protect the work surface. Um, so they're going to just nest together like this. Um, you'll, you'll notice that they won't go together this way because the little tabs don't line up. Um, now we're going to get some glue. And we're going to use wood glue for this. And we're just going to glue these together. Have some paper towels handy because it does get a little bit messy. Try to work it in all those little corners. It's going to ooze out. so. Um, we're just going to work it into the uh, into that edge along the cut line like this. Okay. Um, and what I would recommend is that you take another piece of plastic and lay it over the top, and then sandwich it under something heavy like a book or something like that. That will keep the two panels nice and even across and there's going to be less work to sand them smooth later. Um, so go ahead and do that. Um, we're going to set these aside to dry. Um, you can work ahead in the instructions. The next step after the fin assembly and sealing is putting together the engine mount. So you can go ahead and do that while we're waiting for this glue to dry. But I'll be right back after this is dry. At this point my fins are dry and I can peel off the plastic and take a look at them. I'm just seeing if they're nice and flat across there. Um, if they're not, I'm going to want to sand them. Um, I'll probably give them a light sanding here to begin with. And I got 320 grit sandpaper. I'm just going to sand the surface and remember on this fin, this this edge right here, it has a little kink to it. Don't sand that off. Um, I'm just going to do the surfaces, not the edges at this point. At this point, I'm going to start putting a coating on here to kind of smooth out the surface. And what I'm using is uh, some wood filler. Um, this is water soluble, so you can thin it out with water and paint it on. 
Um, when it dries, you can then sand it and it's going to give a nice smooth surface. Now, I can't stress this enough with this particular rocket. Um, we need a smooth surface. Uh, the reason is the decals. These decals on this rocket are water transfer decals. They're made to be really thin um, and the glue that holds them on is not very strong. So you need some good surface tension. So you want a smooth surface so that the decals have the maximum amount of surface area to adhere to. We're also going to want to paint the rocket glossy color because the decals stick better to glossy. And then if you want a dull finish like this one here, then you can come back with a matte type of clear acrylic painted over the top. But it all starts with a nice smooth surface. So we want to get rid of all the little divots in the wood and that's where the sealer comes from. Now in this particular cup I've already thinned it out pretty thin um, and it's pretty runny as you can see but it's it's not like too thick um, and we're just going to paint it on and this again is water soluble so um, it means you're putting water on the wood and it's going to warp the wood. So when you do it, you have to do both sides at the same time. Um, now This is the fin tab and this is not going to be seen, so you don't need to paint that part with the sealer. Um, so don't worry about that. And that gives you a good place to hold on to anyway as you're flipping it back and forth. And then when you um, want these to dry, what I would recommend is, is just laying it up against something like that so air can get onto both sides and so that that water can evaporate out and then it dries. Um, if you want to put a room fan to blow air over it, that's going to make it dry even quicker. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't, uh, doesn't make it any less strong. Um, so if you're in a, in a hurry, that's what I would suggest doing. As you can see, I'm painting it on pretty thick. Um, and then once this is all painted on, we're going to let it uh, we're going to sand it off and then I'm going to reinspect it. And you may need to do this a couple of times to get out all those little divots and all your sanding marks. And, and don't forget to do the edges. Um, they have pores in them too. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and paint all these with the sealer. Um, and then uh, when I come back, it will be dry. The sealer is dry, um, so I can now sand it. Um, if your fin looks a little bit warped, don't worry. It will kind of flatten out during the sanding process. Um, now I recommend doing this uh, without the sanding tee uh, because if your fin is not flat, you're going to sand in, one, in the high spot to begin with, and you're going to go too deep in the high spot and not get on the rest of the surface. So just use the palm of your hand initially. Um, it does get really dusty, so have a particle mask available. Now I've done this fin already, and so I wanted to kind of compare what we're trying to get to. So right here you can see it's a solid mustard yellow color, and then here you can kind of see the raw balsa through it. Although it's not raw balsa, there's just that thin layer of sealer on it. It's almost, it's so thin, it's almost transparent. You can see it here better um, here on the tab because I didn't put any on the tab. Uh, but you can see it here. Now where the, the edge comes together, where the two pieces come together, that's the important part of the wing. Um, so that's the part that we want nice and level and flat. This is why I had you put books on top of it or something heavy while it was drying because if it's not perfectly flat when you're gluing it, you're going to get something that kind of looks like this where you get that mustard color here in the middle uh, because it's, it's low and on the opposite side where it's higher, you're going to see more of the balsa wood through it. And that's what we're trying to avoid, but it's almost impossible to get it perfect um, but um, so do your best <laughs> that's all I can say so here's my technique and I'll put my mask on and I'm starting with around uh, 120 grit or 180 grit um, just to get the high stuff off 
real quick. So I got all the big ridges off. So um, I want to do that first. You can see here, right here, is one of the big ridges. That's what I'm taking down with the with this medium grit sandpaper. Kind of doing in, in circles. Okay, so okay, so you can see I'm getting more of the wood right here. It's still a little bit high right here, but I want to switch to a finer grit sandpaper. So now I'm using 400 grit sandpaper. Getting down to the surface. Okay, so I'm looking at my fin. Um, and I'm trying. I'm seeing if there's anything that looks like the raw balsa wood, um, and I can see a little bit right here along the edge. So in that case, what I need to do is to put more of the sealer on, and then let it dry, and then sand it again. I can see it like right along that edge. So you don't have to do the whole fin, just that edge. And this time, you want to make it as thin as possible because. Um, you don't want to be sanding too much again. All right, so that edge is what I wanted to fix on that side. This side actually needs a little bit more sanding, but I'll go ahead and do that. Um, also, don't forget about your edges. Uh, for the edges, I would use the sanding T or a sanding block. Uh, because we want to make them nice and flat. You can round them off. That's fine. Um, a lot of people always ask, why do you make them uh, flat? And the reason I make them flat is because they just, they photograph better. But uh, if you want to make them fly better, round them off. Okay. Okay, so now remember this edge right here, this front edge, don't do anything to it. Um, now the back edge I'll sand off. Now that front edge, if you have any um, sealer that kind of oozed over the edge, what I would do is take a hobby knife and just scrape it, just gently, just to knock it off, so that when you put it into the rocket, um, it will still conform to that edge. So on this fin, I'm going to let it dry and then re-sand it. I've already done all the other fins for the rocket. Um, so the next time we handle the fins, it'll be to glue them onto the rocket. So my name is Tim Van Milligan. Thanks for watching this video and thank you for your interest in the X-15 rocket.